So here we're going to look at how we analyze high resolution NMR spectra. Now this idea of high resolution spectra is only appropriate or is only relevant when we're dealing with HNMR. So if we're dealing with carbon nuclear magnetic resonance uh, spectroscopy, there's no, we, we don't have high resolution spectra. But when we're dealing with HNMR, we do have this thing called high resolution spectra. So we know that the, 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 the two things we, we looked for in resolution spectra were chemical shift values, which gave us information about the surrounding structure of the, uh, the hydrogens that caused a given peak. We looked for height, which told us about the number of atoms that caused the peak. However, in HNMR, in high resolution HNMR, we have a third thing that we can analyze. Um, we can look at the number of fine peaks or peak splits. What these tell you is they tell us about the uh, surrounding hydrogen atoms. So here we've got, so this is something additional. So basically, it's rather than having one peak here, one peak here, and one peak here, these peaks have been, this peak here has been split into four, and this peak here has been split into three. So right now we're showing the this is the high resolution spectra of ethyl ethanoate, the same compound that we looked at in the low resolution NMR spectra video. And so here, our, our, uh, our peaks have in fact reduced in size. They have, they have, this is reduced in size and been split into uh, more than one. So this is a, uh, this is this peak here has been split into four. This peak here has been split into three. So peak splitting is basically the different high resolution NMR. In high resolution NMR, peaks are split into a uh, into I guess more than one peak. One peak is split into multiple different parts. So why does splitting occur? Well, if we have a structure that looks like this, let's just look at ethane. Basically, if we have, let's make it propane. If we have this molecule here, we've got two hydrogen environments in this molecule. We've got these six protons, or these six hydrogens are all in the same environment. And then these two are both in their own environment. So we've got two hydrogen environments. And um, so basically, how will peak splitting occur? Well, we're going to have two peaks on our low resolution and two peaks uh, caused by these hydrogens. One caused by the hydrogens underlined in red and one caused by the hydrogens underlined in blue. Now, in if we, if we call N, if we take the letter N and we say that N is equal to the number of hydrogen atoms on adjacent or rather than adjacent we'll say on neighboring atoms then this each peak is going to be split into n plus one smaller peaks what do we mean by the the number of hydrogen atoms on neighboring atoms well, here we've got this carbon with three hydrogens. Well, let, we've got, let's look at the peak caused by these two hydrogens. Basically, uh, here we've got these, both of these hydrogens are bonded to one carbon. Now, let's look at the number of hydrogen atoms on neighbouring carbons. So, when we say on neighbouring atoms, we mean... Uh, so, th so, these hydrogens, the hydrogens causing the peak, are bonded to this carbon. Let's see what hydrogen atoms are on... The, uh, the, the carbon atoms that neighbour this carbon. So if we had an oxygen here with a hydrogen coming off it, then this oxygen would be considered a neighbouring atom. So here we've got six hydrogen atoms on, on uh, the neighbouring atoms of these two hydrogens. So here on this side, 
On this neighbouring carbon, we've got three hydrogens, and on this neighbouring carbon, these two hydrogens in the middle will be split into n plus 1, or seven smaller peaks. Now, if we look at these six hydrogens, which are all in uh, the same environment, and we look on the number of atoms, we look at the number of hydrogen atoms on neighbouring carbons. Well, on the neighbouring carbon here, for, for both, for all six hydrogen atoms, this is a neighbouring carbon. And on this neighbouring carbon, we have two. So the value of n is two. And that means the peak caused by these hydrogen atoms that are underlined in red will be split into n plus one, or three smaller peaks. So that's how we work it out. We look at the number of hydrogen atoms on neighbouring atoms. On, on, we look at the number of hydrogen atoms on, uh, on atoms that neighbour the carbon to which our, our original hydrogens are bonded, or the oxygen to which our original hydrogen More sort of more clear example of how this works. So, as I said, we've got ethyl ethanoate again as our example. So let's just draw out the structure of ethyl ethanoate. We've got carbon here. Carbon here. So this is the structure of ethyl ethanoate. So we're not going to look at chemical shifts here because we went through the chemical shifts in the low resolution NMR. We're simply going to look at how these are, this peak splitting occurs. So this is ethyl ethanoate. This, these four peaks here cause were one peak in the previous in the in the low resolution NMR spectra video, and so this set of peaks here is in fact caused by uh, these two hydrogens here. This peak here, this tall peak, has been caused by this hyd these hydrogens here. And then this set of peaks, this final set of peaks that we have has been caused by these three hydrogens here. So we know that this peak at zero is caused by our TMS. We know that these, so these two hydrogens here are causing uh, this these set of peaks here, and so the, the relative areas remain the same. Although the peaks have been split and they're now smaller, or they're now visibly smaller, the total area of the set of peaks is unchanged. So we've still got two, three, and three as the relative areas. So we can still use that data uh, to, to figure out the number of hydrogens in the, in the environment causing a given set of peaks. However, uh, rather than the number of the number of hydrogen atoms causing a single peak, we're looking, as I said, at the number of hydrogens causing the whole set of peaks. So here, these hydrogens are causing this set of peaks. There are three hydrogens on the neighbouring carbon, and that is why this has been split into four. Now, this this uh, this tall one here has been caused by these three hydrogens. There are no hydrogens on the neighbouring carbon, so this has remained one peak. Last on the neighbouring carbon, and that is why. This has been split into three smaller peaks. So that is the justification for our slightly different looking spectrum. Now, let's take a new molecule, and let's just, let's just say we want to try and figure out, by looking at a molecular structure, the number of finer peaks that uh, a high resolution NMR spectrum will have. So let's look at, we're gonna look at a pretty, slightly more complex molecule here. So this is methyl propentuol. Sorry, methyl propen one ol. So this is methyl propen one ol. This is what we call this molecule here. We've got our. Uh, we look at. We've got our, our long string. A string of three carbons here, with a uh, hydrox with a hydroxyl group on the end. So it's propane one ol, and we've got a methyl group coming out of the middle carbon, 
and this middle carbon is the only carbon from which a methyl a methyl group could come and therefore we've got methyl protein one of so how many fine peaks so here we've got four fine peaks one fine peak and three fine peaks how many fine peaks will this molecule produce in a high resolution NMR spectrum? Well, probably very good to be aware of is that if we're dealing with a hydroxyl group in an organic molecule, then this hydrogen here will ne the peak caused by this hydrogen will never be split. And it will never split. Uh, the peaks caused by its surrounding uh, surrounding hydrogen atoms. So this, when we've got a hydrogen atom in a hydroxyl group, its uh, its peak will never be split, and it will never split other peaks. It basically, the oxygen is preventing it from getting involved in any of this peak splitting business. So that means that uh, this hydrogen here is going to cause one peak. Now we've obviously got two other hydrogens in the same environment here. One hydrogen, we look on the other side, it's a, it's a hydroxyl group, so that won't affect it. So we can say that for the purposes of peak splitting, there is one neighbouring atom, and therefore these hydrogens will cause two peaks. So we look at this first hydrogen, it's causing one peak. There will be two peaks representing these, as I've written here. Now we move on to the next hydrogen environment. On the adjacent carbons, there are lots of peaks here. So we've got on this side two adjacent two hydrogens on the adjacent carbon there. We've got three hydrogens on this adjacent carbon and three hydrogens on this adjacent carbon. So there's a total of eight neighboring uh, eight hydrogen atoms on neighboring atoms. So n is equal to eight, and therefore we're going to have nine finer peaks caused by this this hydrogen here. Now the rest of our the rest of our hydrogen we could swap this group and this group and everything would still be the same. And so if we look at the adjacent carbon to this group, we've got, this is the adjacent carbon here, there's one hydrogen atom on the adjacent carbon. So n is equal to one, and therefore the, the, the peak caused by these six hydrogen atoms will be split into two. So that means we've got a total of 14 peaks, 14 fine peaks. So that's how we go about uh, figuring out the number of smaller peaks or finer peaks that uh, low resolution peaks will be split into. And so this idea of peak splitting is, adds an, is basically provides an extra factor for us to analyze in even further detail using high resolution NMR spectra.